One, two, church. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is awake and full of energy. All right, we're going to get right into our first song. Two, three. Whoa, 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 Shackled to the way I was So I'm gonna live like a chain is gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Oh, done, done He is risen, it is done And I sing hallelujah That will overcome So I'm gonna shout like the battle's won Fall back devil cause your time is up Oh, so I'm gonna live like my stone is gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Whoa, done, done to be in the house of the Lord with you all. Uh, my name is Pastor John. Pastor Rachel's going to be bringing the message in a little bit. Pastor Kevin's making all the magic happen with his team over there on the tech board. Pastor James, I think, is, oh, there he is. I was going to say he's upstairs, but he's right there. Oh, the beautiful princess wave. Thank you, James. And uh, he'll be praying for us all in a little bit. Uh, but I just wanted to say good morning, good morning. and welcome. Um, I, we have a couple announcements. We have, oh, let me take this down so you can see my face. Um, uh, we have CR, right? We talked about it starting on the 20th. We're actually going to launch on the 27th because we want to make sure everybody's here and half of our 
core leadership team wasn't going to be here next week. So come on out on the 27th. Celebrate Recovery is an amazing, amazing program. We do worship just like this. We do lessons, and we learn how to kind of heal and and get well and have wholeness in our lives. And it's just an amazing program. And Rachel and I and a whole bunch of us are going to be here every Thursday night, and it's going to be wonderful. So come join us for that. That starts at 6.30 on the 27th. Uh, also, we have men's breakfast coming up on June 5th. So come on out for that, men. That's an awesome time, 8 a.m. We do it at our A1 space, so right above uh, the A1. And so when uh, you come out to that, James puts out an awesome spread Waffle uh, bar and cereal and eggs and bacon and potatoes and all the other good stuff. So it's great. All right. That's enough of the announcements. The women's, they meet every week at 6? 6 p.m. And that's online. No waffles. Sorry. Virtual waffles there. But uh, And that's been an awesome, awesome uh, time as well. So not that I'm there. Rachel tells me. So anyway. But that's enough of the business. Let's pray and come before our God and get ready for worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you do in our lives. Lord, we just want to be here in your presence together. We ask that you would just help us to love, grow, and serve together in your name. Jesus, uh, that's, that's what we're called to do, and we want to uh, do that well. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit be here um, Lord, we thank you for these temples that you've given us, and we are so thankful that you decided not to live in some temple made by man's hands, but by the one that you created uh, our flesh and in our bodies, Lord, and that our spirit can mingle with your spirit, and that we can be uh, whole and brought to the, to the complete person that you meant us to be when we accept your, your sacrifice of the Son. Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus. We, we're so excited to share uh, what he's done in our lives, Lord, and help us to, to be able to be that testimony, uh, whether we do it with our words or our actions or just uh, by who we are. Lord, just let, it, let you be seen in all that we do. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you. And we lift you up in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, now let us rise and worship the Lord our God. Let's sing this together. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you, you have, have chosen me. me. Love has called my name. I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child.
mother I am surrounded by songs of deliverance we've been fear shackle you in that song we talk about being a slave to fear and how sometimes fear shackles us in the position we are in this next song we're going to talk about stepping out of that fear and leading where god wants you to lead this is why it's called a calling you find your calling because he's calling you have you found your calling not everyone has have you sat and talked to god and when you do find your calling is the fear of that going to hold you from stepping out because I know fear grips you in a point where it almost feels like you can't move, breathe, or even see the step before that. And in stepping out of this comfort zone, they always say stepping out of that is not easy. It's not comfortable in your comfort zone. That's why it's called your comfort zone. But when you find your calling where he's calling you to go and lead, you need to step out of that comfort zone and break that shell of comfort that you have to be the new shell that he sees for your calling. So I say, if you haven't found your calling yet, take time, talk to him, see where he leads you, see where he's pushing you in those waters. Will your feet fail you? Will you go to that calling? Will you be what he knows you are? And I know we all will in our time, but you got to grip to him. He's going to build that strength in you. He's going to bring that to you there. You call me out upon the water the great unknown where fear may fail and there i find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stay i will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. 
Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me, you've ever failed and you won't start now. So I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you Father, let us come before you. Lord God, that song is so powerful. I know that song has helped so many people when oceans rise. Lord God, you control the oceans, Lord God. You control the wind and the waves, Lord God. Allow us to trust in you. Allow us to know that your best is your best in that way. We need to focus on you because you only have our best in mind. Lord God, Thank you for all that you do. Lord God, allow us to trust you more. Allow us to trust you without borders. Allow us to put our trust without 
any type of pullback at all. Lord God, we love you and we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Just Church. How are you guys doing? You guys can have a seat. So, that was awesome. Let's give it up to our, for our worship team. It's so funny coming off of such a powerful song like that. Like, oh, I can, I'm getting goosebumps because that's the song that was playing when I got saved for the very first time. For the very first time. For the only time. Um, but, so that, that, that's in my heart, right? That, that's one of those things where I've seen God use that song to break chains of addiction, to break chains of anxiety, of depression, of, of what, just so many amazing things. And it's, it's such a strong, powerful song. And I just, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You guys love it, obviously. <laughs> um, I, I just think it's fantastic. But so now changing subjects, the connection cards, Woo! Woo! give it up for the connection cards. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah, not as much. Okay, understood, understood. Um, <laughs> so these are a great way for us to find out what this is. Basically the communication that you guys can have with us on how your week's going, what's going on. If you have a celebration, if you have something that you're struggling with, you're, you're allowing us to be able to just connect with you. Hence the name connection cards. I'm just making that connection right now. Yeah, right? I wonder how many more times I can say, see, Tammy, this is why I don't do the connection card. Thanks. Thanks, Tammy. I appreciate that. So the other part of the connection card is on the back. If you want to join one of our ministry teams, we would love to have you. Um, it's, it's so important to get involved. You know, you don't want to just show up on a Sunday because basically, yes, you get you get fed, but really the connection, oh, again, T, I'm sorry. The connection of the church is throughout the week. You know, this is where the the you actually start to feel like you're you're part of it. You don't just go to just church, you're part of just church. And it's just it's very important. So I think that's pretty much it. And I did pray, but I'm gonna pray again because that's what I do when I end. I don't know what to tell you. So if I could have you guys bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord God, I pray for every single person in this room, every single person that's watching on Facebook Live or YouTube. Lord God, I, I pray that oh, that they do trust you without borders. Lord God, I, I pray that they just fully put their trust in you. And Lord, I ask that you just take this message today and allow it to wash over us. Lord God, allow us to learn from your word today, God. Allow us to set away any distractions that are in our minds just to put them off. Just to put them off and to focus on you. We drove all the way here. We got dressed. We, we did all the stuff. We, and allow us to focus on you. We didn't just come here to talk to people, although that's awesome, but allow us to focus on your word, Lord Jesus. We love you and we thank you for all that you do. It's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. And now we have Pastor Rachel. She has her own microphone. Excellent. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is great to see all of you here today, and it's great to have all of you with us um, on Facebook as well, or if you're watching in the future on Facebook or YouTube or, or wherever, wherever the heck you're finding us, we're, uh, we're excited um, to have you here with us. And um, it is so awesome to see so many faces here. I'm so excited um, that we are back together again, that things are kind of starting to get back to a little bit of normal, and that's a really, really um, just something to be, to be thankful for, um, for all of us to be thankful for. Um, we are in week four of a series that we've been in that we've been calling The Stand. Now, if you haven't been with us, that's okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of a recap, but we've been studying through some stories in the book of Daniel, different ways that we, as God's people, have to stand. And the first week we talked about how do we as Christ followers stand out in the right ways at the right time and for the right reason. 
And then in week two, we talked about how we can stand up, stand up to others about how we can be a part of godly conflict resolution. When we're called to lovingly, gently, humbly help restore others to a godly life. And then last week, we were in Daniel chapter 6, and we talked about how to stand strong, even in the face of opposition. And we studied the story, well-known story of Daniel in the lion's den, right? And so if you missed any of those messages, I would encourage you to go back. You can watch them. They're on Facebook. They're on YouTube. They're on our website. Um, Take a look, because let me tell you, there's some awesome, awesome lessons in each one of these messages. And today, I am so excited. And James is absolutely right, and I didn't even talk to him about the message today. But today is going to be an awesome, awesome message. And I am convinced that God is going to do some miraculous things. But he's also right that you've got to stick with me because there's some crazy stuff that we're going to talk about today. Like, it's, it's just insanity, okay? So if, if you've read ahead in, in, chapter, in chapter 10 of Daniel, it's like it's madness here. But this is our week four of our five-week series. And we're going to call this one Standing Firm in Faith. Okay? Now, if you were with us last week, you remember, like we said, we talked about Daniel being thrown into the lion's den. And we said at that time, sometimes we think of Daniel as a young man, you know, this, this handsome, young, strong man. He's thrown into the lion's den. Daniel was actually about 80 years old at that point. So he was definitely an older gentleman. And so now, that was chapter 6, we're in chapter 10. Guess what? He's even older, okay? So at this point, Daniel's he's, he's old. Like, he's an old guy here. And if you've been following along in our series, you know that one of Daniel's traits is his faithfulness. His faithfulness in following God, the one true God, our God, the God of Israel, for decades and decades, even in the face of being taken from his homeland, even in the face of difficulties and opposition, he has been standing firm in faith and trusting God. And if you remember way back to week one, we talked about how Daniel and the other boys of royal descent were taken from their homes and their families in Israel. And not only did the Babylonians take these young men from Israel, but they also destroyed the temple, the most holiest of places to the Jews in Jerusalem. And since that time, again, decades ago, Daniel has been praying He's been praying for restoration, for restoration of the Jewish people, for restoration of the temple that was destroyed. And so here in Daniel chapter 10, we're told that Daniel is given a vision. And this vision that he receives is this heavy revelation about a great war to come. And this revelation troubles Daniel greatly. And it says that it troubles him so much that he mourned for three weeks. The message version says that Daniel mourned over Jerusalem for three weeks. He ate only bland foods. He didn't bathe. He didn't care for himself. But during that time, he prayed and he sought God. And at the end of that period, he's given another great vision from God. And this is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. And I'm going to give you a little tip about, about this message. The vision that Daniel gets It's not really about the message, okay? It's not really about what Daniel hears. So if you're looking about for a great message of restoration of Daniel and his people in the temple, you're not going to get it here. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. But what we're going to talk about today is the way that this message is delivered to Daniel. And, and, And... it, the point of, is not the message itself, it's the manner by which it comes to Daniel. And so we're going to jump right in. We're going to start in Daniel, Daniel chapter 10, in verse 5 and 6. And Daniel writes, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen, with a belt of fine gold from Euphaz, and around his waist. His body was like topaz, and his face like lightning, and his eyes like flaming torches his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. So now we see that Daniel gets this vision from this messenger, and this is clearly some sort of angelic or otherworldly being. And we're not really told who the messenger is. A lot of biblical scholars actually have the theory that this messenger is the pre-incarnate Christ. And what that means is it's Jesus before his earthly life and ministry. 
And if you remember, we talked about in week one, or if you know anything about the book of Daniel, it's part of the Old Testament. So those are the books in the Bible that came before Jesus' life and ministry. And Daniel was actually thought to live sometime between 620 and 538 B.C. So over 500 years before Jesus' birth. So it's a little bit of a mind bend to think about Jesus being this messenger, bringing this vision to Daniel. But we have to remember who Jesus really is. He's not just a human being, right, who lived at a certain point of time. He's God in the flesh. And if we go to John chapter 1, verse 1, in the Gospels, so this is in the New Testament, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of mankind. And if you look at that text, when it says, in the beginning was the Word, word is capitalized. And there's a reason for that. There's two different words that are translated as word in the New Testament from the Greek. There's the graphos, and there's the logos. The graphos is the written word of God, the Bible. And then there's the logos, the living word of God, and that's Jesus. And in the beginning was the word. That's the logos. That's Jesus. He was there before the foundation of the world because God consists of the Trinity. And we're getting into some really heavy concepts here. So, so stick with me. But the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's our God, three in one. And human beings will try to explain the Trinity in a lot of different ways. You might hear someone say, God is like an egg. It has the shell, it has the white, and it has the yolk. God is not an egg, okay? I'm just going to tell you that right now, okay? God, God's not an egg. That's not, that's not how we talk about the Trinity, okay? And some people will say God is like the element H2O, right? It can exist as, as a gas, a steam. It can exist as a liquid, water. And it can exist as ice, a solid. Yeah, okay, fine. But it can't do all three at once. And God can do all three at once. So here's the secret to the Trinity. It's a mystery. We don't get it, Okay? God, our God is so big, he's so amazing, we're never going to understand fully. But you hear me talk about it every week, and I've experienced it personally, and I know a lot of you have too. We pray in the name of God, who is our Father in heaven. We pray in the name of God, in the person of Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for each and every one of us. And in the name of God, in the person of the Holy Spirit, who lives with and in us at all times. Three in one. So even though Jesus appears in physical form in the New Testament, he existed even before the foundation of the world because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Logos, the living Word of God. So back to the point. We don't really know for sure that this messenger was the pre-incarnate Christ, but there's a lot of theories that it was either Jesus himself or some very high-ranking, angelic, heavenly being. But we know for sure this messenger is not of this world, okay? He, he, he looks like Topaz, right? He's, his face is like lightning. He's got these, these burning eyes. This is not someone who is here in our world, okay? So going on to verse 7, Daniel says, I, Daniel, was the only one who saw this vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale, and I was helpless. I mean, this is just crazy stuff here, okay? Again, I know I've said this before during this series, but if anybody ever tells you that the Bible is boring, they are a liar, okay, man? This, this is crazy. I mean, just think about this. We got this guy, he shines like topaz, you know, he's got this burning eyes and lightning face. I'm, I mean, this is just insane stuff. And, and, and all of Daniel's strength is just, just gone from, from simply being in his presence. And, and everyone else flees. They can't even see him, but they can sense that presence. And they're so overwhelmed that they run away. And so Daniel is left on his own. And so this message is his and his alone. 
So this is the first lesson that we're going to take away about standing firm in faith. And that is that when God gives us revelation, oftentimes it's personal. Oftentimes it's just for us. Now there's sometimes that 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 revelation may be shared with others. It may be wisdom that he kind of plants in your heart and you bring it out at some point in the future. But a lot of times when God speaks directly to us, it's for us. It's personal. And let me just stop for a second because I didn't mention it before, but I want to just let you know that um, the handout, every single week I do this handout. I know people who have been here before, you've heard me because I work really hard on this handout. So there is a beautiful, wonderful handout that is on our website um, that you can take a look at. It has all of the scriptures in it, and it also has these points, the ones that I make sure that we hear when I say, first thing, that's going to be in the handout. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. So that's the first thing. When God gives us a revelation, oftentimes it's personal. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, where God just just drives something into your heart, and it just penetrates, and you're super excited about it, right? So you can't wait to tell everybody. So you, you go to your small group, or you go to you know your, your, your accountability partner, or whoever it is, and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to tell you what God revealed to me, and it's amazing. And then, you know, you just go off about it, and they're like, okay. You know, they're looking at you like you've got three heads. And, and it doesn't have that power for them because it's not personal to them. It's meant for you. And, and this happens to me all the time, right? I'll, I'll, finish, I'll finish giving the message. I'll finish preaching. And I'll be like, man, I really whiffed that one today. I, there is nothing that anybody got out of that. And invariably, someone will come up with tears in their eyes, or they'll write me a note, and they'll say, oh, my gosh. I can't even explain, but you were talking directly to me, and God revealed this to me. And that's because that revelation, that's not me. That's God, and he's speaking personally to you. And so keep that in mind. Oftentimes, when God speaks, it's to us personally, okay? And it's amazing, and it's transformative, and no one else may understand it, but that does not make it any less real or any less powerful. So hold on to that. So Daniel has a moment just like that right here. And then we continue in verse 9. And he says, Then I heard him speaking, and I listened to him. I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. So this is powerful. Just at the sound of his voice, Daniel fell down, face to the ground. And I know it says that he fell into a deep sleep, but he's not just napping here, right? He, he didn't just have this happen and go, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit tired. I'm going to take a little nap. But it, it's more like, like a trance state. Like, like God, is, God is taking his full attention. He is commanding his full attention. And Daniel cannot help but just fall on his face. And, and right here, we got some support that this heavenly messenger is the incarnate Jesus. Because I'll tell you right now, that is the power of God. The power of God that no matter how big or strong you are, the strongest of men cannot bear the weight of the Spirit of God when it comes upon you. And some of you know what I'm talking about, that moment when you're so deep in the presence of God that you lose your strength. You have an encounter like that, and it's just so heavy. And for me, sometimes I'll, I'll have an incredible worship experience or, or I'll actually hear directly from God. And I, I get afterwards what I call the Holy Spirit headache because my human body just cannot handle who he is. He's so overwhelming. It is so overwhelming when you experience God's presence, God's grace, and his goodness, when you know that you're forgiven, when you know what he's done for you, when you know how deeply you are loved. And you're overwhelmed by his comfort and his presence and his assurance and his greatness and his faithfulness. And if you haven't had a moment like that, just like T was saying about your calling, if you haven't found that, if you haven't had a moment like that, if you haven't experienced God like that, open yourself up for it. Ask him for it. He will reveal himself to you. And so then verse 10 says, a hand touched me. And set me trembling on my hands and knees. So remember, he's on his face, but then the hand touches him and sets him trembling on his hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, 
Consider carefully the words I am about to speak to you and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. So Daniel is so overwhelmed that he's flat on his face, but then one touch sets him on his hands and knees, lifted him up. And I don't know about you, but if you've been walking with God for any period of time, think about a time when you have been flat on your face and God has lifted you up. And if you're reading this passage, you may say, yeah, but he only got onto his hands and knees. But let me tell you right now, if you have ever been down at your end on your face, you know that the distance between being flat on your face and on your knees, that is an amazing distance to travel. And then he's able to have that strength to stand. And I love how the, the New Living Translation puts it. What I was reading before was the New International Version. But the New Living Translation says in verses 10 and 11, Just then a hand touched me and lifted me, still trembling to my hands and knees. And the man said to me, Daniel, you are very precious to God. So listen carefully to what I have to say to you. Stand up, for I have been sent to you. When he said this to me, I stood up, still trembling. He lifted me, Daniel said. And then he said to Daniel, you are very precious to God. And I know this is kind of a scary thing that Daniel's going through, but man, that is amazing. Can you imagine having, having this heavenly being in front of you and telling you these things directly from God himself? And then he continues on in verse 12, and he says, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. So here's what Daniel is hearing. He's hearing that he's precious to God. He's hearing that God has heard him. Think about this. From the beginning. So we said Daniel's been praying for decades for the Jewish people, for Israel, for his homeland, for restoration of his people and of the temple, of God's temple. Can you imagine how he feels now hearing that God has heard his prayers since the first day? And here's another great thing to take from this experience that we're seeing in Daniel's life. Remember, the first thing we said was God often speaks revelation to us personally. The second thing is, God is at work doing far more than we will ever understand. He hears us. He is at work. Sometimes it may not feel like it, but he has already set into motion far more than we can see here in the natural world. There are forces all around us, things that we are being protected from, shielded from. In the book of Romans, Chapter 8, verse 28, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God is working in all things. He's doing way more, way more than we can see or comprehend. And so here's where the message really starts getting interesting. Remember, we said in verse 12, it says, Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. Now, we talked about at the very beginning of this chapter, Daniel had this vision about this impending war. And this vision was so disturbing to him that he went into this three-week time of prayer and fasting, right? Three weeks, 21 days. So then in verse 13, this heavenly being says, But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So let's talk about this for a second, because one of two things is going to happen right here. Either you are tracking with me and you are like, this is amazing stuff right here, okay? Or you're like, I have no idea what's going on, and this is just way too weird, and I'm going to start losing you right here. So I'm just telling you, stick with me for a second, okay? Poor Jenny. Stick with me, Jenny, okay? (laughs) All right. 
But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Now, who is the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia? No idea. I don't know, okay? I, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Christians don't know all the answers. Pastors don't know all the answers. Biblical scholars don't know all the answers. Who is the spirit prince of the per kingdom of Persia? It could be Satan. We don't know. But what we do know, or what we can probably tell from what this says, is that it's some demonic force, some dark force that was preventing this heavenly being from getting to Daniel. And remember, the second thing we said that we can see here from these passages today is that God is doing far more than we will ever understand or see. And we can expand that and we can say, not only is God doing far more, but there are other forces at work that we can't see. And they're also doing far more than we will ever know. There is far more at work in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm, than here in the earthly realm. That you and I can't see, but that we do feel the effects of. We've talked about the verse from Ephesians in chapter 6, verse 12, where it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And that's why we live by faith and not by sight. Because what you see with your eyes is not all that there is. Don't ever believe that what is in this phys physical realm is all that there is. So essentially, this, this heavenly messenger is saying, you've been praying for the last three weeks. I've been doing battle in the heavenly realms on your behalf. And then Michael, the archangel, Michael, holy guacamole, Michael, the archangel, came to back me up, okay? So that allowed me to then leave that battle and come to answer your prayer. I mean, this is wild stuff. Like, like really, this is crazy. So powerful to think about this. Daniel is this old man now, well over 80. He's been praying faithfully for restoration of his people since being taken from Israel when he was about 12 to 15 years old. And he's been praying for these three weeks on, 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 on this vision that he's received. And, and what has he seen? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing has happened. There's been no signs until now. And this heavenly messenger tells us that he has heard him from the moment he began speaking. Just because he didn't see something happen doesn't mean that God wasn't doing something. I know this is weird stuff. I know. I get it. But I want you to hear this because if you've been waiting for a long time, if you've been crying out to God, if you've been asking God to help you or heal you in some area, or if you've been praying for restoration or provision or wisdom or deliverance, don't get discouraged just because you haven't seen anything. Just because you're not seeing something doesn't mean God is not doing something. Amen. Because if we take this story to ha heart, the first time you cried out to God, he released his heavenly army, and they're doing warfare on your behalf. And your job is just to keep praying. Your job is just to keep believing. Your job is just to get out of the way and let them do their job and not to put any more obstacles in their way. Don't fall into doubt. Don't fall into distraction. Don't fall into other sin. You may not see anything happening, but you have no idea what kind of battle is raging in the heavenly realms on your behalf by a God who loves you so much that he waged the ultimate war by giving his life for you. And he is still working behind the scenes to do the things for you that you can't see, the things that you will never understand, even if you could see them, because he loves you so much. And I don't want to spoil the end if y'all haven't heard but God 
wins. Okay? That, that we know. God wins. Yeah, the light overcomes the darkness. So if you believe that here today, no matter what troubles you're going through, no matter what heartache you're going through, you can believe on what I am saying right now. Because 21 days earlier, when Daniel saw nothing, there was a battle raging in heaven. Because his prayer was heard the first time he prayed it. Just because we don't see anything does not mean God is not doing something. And I want to illustrate this for you, just real quick. Some of you know that John and I have four kids, all right? And we've been praying for them forever, since we've been Christians. Um, but we've also been praying for the people that God would send to them. We've been praying for their spouses forever, before we even knew their names, before we even knew, um, in Elijah's case, what sex he was, <laughs> you know, but when he was still inside, we were praying for the person that God is preparing for him. You know, and, and those stories have not yet been completed. We're still praying, and in some cases, we're still praying for people that we don't know yet. But we got to see that come to fruition with Mitch and Julia, our oldest daughter, Julia, when she got married. And I got to say to Mitch, the day before they got married, I have been praying for you since before I even knew your name. And God was preparing you for her and he was preparing her for you. And that's powerful. And that's something that I can tell you in my life that I know. I know that God is already going ahead. And he is already answering my prayers. And that is amazing. Because whatever you're facing, whatever it is you've been praying on, sometime you're going to come to a place in your faith where you want to give up, where you feel like you've got nothing left when you're at the end. And that's okay. Because let me tell you what, when you're at the end of your strength, that's when he is the strongest. When you can reveal your weakness, that's when God's strength kicks in. Not in your own power, but when his power becomes the most real. Right? Amen. And I'm going to tell you a really quick funny story before we, before we uh, end up. And that's about my husband, John, who I love so much. And we've been together forever. And that uh, May 14th, it was 30 years ago that we got engaged. So that was pretty crazy. I know. It's like forever ago. A whole person ago. It's crazy. Um, but when we were first Christians, and we were saved when we were about 29, so we were, year, we were young, you know. Um, and when we were first Christians, John was on fire. I mean, fire. Like, he's on fire now, but man, he was on fire. Like, he was bold, and he was fearless, and he was probably a little bit reckless, but you know, it is what it is. So we, we were in a church, and we were in a community, a faith community, and we had friends, um, and we found out that they were getting divorced. And it was devastating. I mean, devastating. And, um, and, and they didn't really have a tight faith support system. And so they called John because he was just the most spiritual person they knew. And they were like, we need help. Come, come, come over here. So he we went over to the house to meet with um, the wife. And um, she was a big, beautiful, wonderful African-American woman, and she was a personality. Let me tell you, when she walked in a room, you knew it. I mean, it was, it was uh, unbelievable. She was just such a big personality. And so John walked in, and, and you know, I, I, I kind of picture it like a scene from a Medea movie, which are some of my favorite movies. It's just crazy. And so John walks in, and there's all these people there, and they're, they're just, you know, everybody's, you know, trying to comfort her, and there's crying, and there's, you know, cooking and just everybody's together and they're doing everything and John walks in and he walks right over to her and he says Maria I just want to tell you right now you are in the best position of your life I really envy you because you are so lucky right in this moment you are better off than any other person in this room and she was like what 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 is this what is this little white boy coming in and saying to me, like, Sir, like she really was just like, what? And he said, you have nowhere to go but up in his strength because you have no more of your own. This is it. You're done. And you can only rely on his strength. And that is an amazing place to be. 
And I'll tell you, um, we, we knew uh, this couple for many, many years. Our kids played in the same soccer league as their son. And, and she came up to me on, at one game and she said, I just want to let you know how much I love your husband. Because he came to me and she told me this whole story about what happened. And she said, that saved me that day because I knew that I was going to be okay. I knew that God was there, and I knew that he was going to carry me. And that was, I was, I was, I don't know if I've ever been as proud of my husband as I was that day, because it was an amazing, amazing thing, and I could just see in her eyes, and she, this was years later, I mean years later, and she's on the soccer field, and our kids are playing soccer, and she's crying, and she said, you know, she's moved on, she's healed at this point, they're, you know, they're, they're divorced, I think her husband, her ex-husband was there as well, and they, you know, they still were parenting their son, they were, they were getting it done, but she had had this moment, and it was such a beautiful moment of God revealing who he was through John and revealing his strength and how he could just carry us when we have nothing left. So when you're at the end of your strength, that's when you can fully experience his strength. And until you get there, you will never understand how good he is. Until you recognize, I can't do this anymore. I'm at the end of myself. That's when his power becomes so real. Now let's finish out this thing with Daniel here. So we're, we're in verse 14. And this heavenly being says to Daniel, Now I am here to explain what will happen to your people in the future. For this vision concerns a time yet to come. And then Daniel says, while he was speaking to me, I looked down at the ground, unable to say a word. And then the one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I, op and I opened my mouth, and I began to speak. I said to the one standing in front of me, I am filled with anguish because of the vision I have seen, my Lord, and I am very weak. How can someone like me, your servant, talk to you, my Lord? The strength is gone, and I can barely breathe. Then the one who looked like a man touched me again, and I felt my strength returning. Don't be afraid, he said, for you are very precious to God. Peace, be encouraged, be strong. As he spoke these words to me, I suddenly felt stronger and said to him, please speak to me, my Lord, for you have strengthened me. I just want to hear this. I want everyone to hear this. One touch. Some of you need that touch. One touch, and your faith is restored. One touch, and you're believing for that thing that God, that you stopped believing on years ago, that God is still working on for you. One touch, and it's enough to keep going. One touch, and your strength can return. One touch from God, and everything changes. And this heavenly being goes on to say, hey, again, if you didn't hear me before, don't be afraid. You are precious to God. Be encouraged. Be strong. You can keep standing in faith. Because the first time you prayed, God heard your prayer. And he released angelic forces to do work in the heavenly realms. And let's be clear, we've talked about this before. Just because you pray for something doesn't mean that God's going to answer you for what you ask him for, right? He's not a cosmic vending machine, okay? He's the sovereign God over all creation. But he's still at work. Just because you don't see anything and just because you don't get exactly what you ask for doesn't mean he's not doing something, right? If you, if you say, God, I, I, please give me a million dollars, he's not sending out his angel armies to, like, get your million dollars ready, okay? I know. I, that's a disappointment, isn't it? But if you're praying for his provision, if you're praying for, God, give me this day my daily bread, give me what I need for today, God is sending out his armies to do battle on your behalf, to make sure that you have what you need need. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean he's not doing it. And when you pray, know that your prayer has been heard, that he's sending those armies out to fight in your favor from the moment you prayed. And you can rely on his strength, not just your own.
And I can promise you, he is already working all things together for your good and for his glory. Let's pray. Father, we come before you today and we pray to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit. That you would strengthen each one of us to have the faith to believe what your will is in heaven would be done here on earth. Lord, I thank you today for those who are faithfully continuing to believe. God, we thank you that you care about the intimate details of our lives, that we are precious to you. God, we thank you that even though we don't see you doing anything, by faith we believe that in the heavenly realms you are doing more than we could ever possibly imagine. And God, we thank you right now at this moment for those who are at the end of their own strength when weakness has set in that your strength would take over. God, build our faith. Give us the faith to continue to believe even when we can't see. And God, maybe, maybe some of us have never really even had that faith. We've never experienced that faith. And you're, you're, you're here and you're calling us here. And, and maybe some of us here don't even know why. We're not even really sure why we're here. Maybe we're searching for evidence that, that, God, you are working in our lives. And so, God, I pray that your spirit would reveal just a glimpse of what you're doing in that spiritual realm. That your Holy Spirit would be revealed to those who really have never known or believed. Draw them near to you today and help each one of us to realize we need this. We need you, God. We need a Savior because we get to the end of our strength and your strength is never ending. God, help us to realize that we are, we're all sinners. We've all sinned. But God, that's why we sit in your grace and that's why this is so powerful because Jesus who was without sin, died, rose again, conquered death, so that anyone who calls on his name would be saved and forgiven and transformed forever. And so if you're here today and you've never put your trust and your faith in God, or maybe you just need to reaffirm that, maybe it's just been a hard time and you just need to lift yourself up and surrender yourself to him. We're going to pray a simple prayer now. And you can just pray it in your head or you can pray it out loud after me. Just ask God to fill you with his strength. God, I know I'm a sinner. I can't fix myself. But I believe you can. Come into my life and make me new. I give myself to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Uh, and if anybody here prayed that prayer for the first time, I just want to make sure I say this. There is a place on our connection card um, that you can check and, and let us know. Or even if you didn't pray it for the first time, but maybe you prayed it and you're like, man, you know, I, I don't know what I've been doing, but I have not been relying on God's strength. I've been praying, I've been relying on my strength, and I haven't been believing that he's been working on my good. You know, let let us know that. Let us know what you're struggling with. Let us know what, what you're, you're conquering, what your victories are. We want to be able to, to support you and to be in prayer with you. Um, and so, so let us know. Write that on those uh, connection cards. We'd love to hear about that. Um, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Pastor Kevin now, and he's going to um, lead us in our uh, last part of our worship service, the offering. Yay, favorite time of the church service, right? Offering time. Why is everybody leaving? <laughs> no, that was, that was an awesome message, Pastor Rachel. I, I love the whole spiritual part of our journey. I, I tell you, if we had eyes to see the spiritual activity around us, I, I think we would be awe-inspired and terrified all at the same time because I believe that stuff. You know, the Bible says that God gives his angels charge concerning us in, in Psalms 9. I believe it. Can I see it? Can I prove it through any kind of maybe scientific or, or material ways? Probably not. But my faith tells me that this is true because God is spirit and there's spiritual things happening all the time. Even our time of offering is a spiritual activity. 
I mean, it's a physical, act physical activity, right? We have to do something physically, but it's also a spiritual activity because we're presenting our gifts to God, you know, a God who is spirit. Uh, it's interesting, um, Pastor Rachel was talking about the messenger as, as being kind of like a, a forerunner of Christ, or th there's a fancy word, it's called Christophany. It's a word, Christophany, which means in the Old Testament, when somebody appeared and it could have been Jesus, like pre-incarnate Jesus. Um, and there was another event way back in Genesis uh, 14 where a guy by the name of Melchizedek met up with Abraham. And it says that Abraham fell down to Melchizedek, Melchizedek and gave him 10% of everything he owned. And Abraham was wicked wealthy. I mean, he had, that guy had so much money, even more than Jeff Bezos, I think. He was, in his day, he was like the guy. And he gave 10% as he fell down before this priest, Melchizedek, who was, many theologians consider a Christophany. He was like Jesus precarnate. And why would you have something like that in the Bible? Because it demonstrates what, what our relationship with Christ is today. We don't give to God because he compels us, because he says, or the church says, you have to give 10%, or you have to give you know, to this, that, or the other thing. It's your Christian duty. Yeah, in a sense, it's our Christian duty, but we give out of our love. We give out of our sacrifice. We give out of our commitment to be all in to God. Does Jesus need your money? Does God need your money? He really doesn't. He's pretty self-sufficient. But who does need the money? The church needs the money. We need the money to do, to have this service today. We need it. We need those funds to be able to go out into a dark world and bring the light of Christ to people that need it. And, and I, I've had lots of experiences in my life where I, I've seen my giving directly impact another life. It's like, you know, when Pastor John went and spoke to that woman and said just the right thing at just the right time, and it touched her in, in ways that spiritually that nobody else could have done. He was the man for that job on that day. Well, today, we're called as Christians to support our church and to support the kingdom. You don't know that your $10 or your $1,000 or whatever it is that you're putting in the offering today, how that is going to be just the right thing at just the right time to enable somebody to come into the kingdom of God, to, to enter into eternity. It's real stuff. This isn't just me trying to build you up. This is true. All of us here came to Christ, I, presumably, if, if you have come to Christ or not, because you were in a place where somebody preached the word and you committed your life. Somebody supported that financially. And so that's what I'm up here to do today, to give us all the opportunity to support what we are doing here at Just Church. And you heard that message today. This is good stuff. This isn't, this isn't you know, some kind of, uh, uh, you know. Watered down Kool-Aid. Watered down Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, T. And it's not just smoozing people to get money. People, I remember when I, you know, people say, oh, you're just into pastoring because you want to make money from, get people to give you money. Let me tell you something. Uh, yeah, wrong gig. If you want to make money, uh, it's not in pastoring. And yeah, there are some pretty wealthy guys, but we, we won't go there. It, w when you're preaching the gospel of Christ, you're doing it because it's your heart and your calling and your commitment to God, not because bec it, these guys aren't making big bucks. Um, so we're going to take up an offering this morning so that we can continue to see the gospel of preached and and. Uh, just a light. We are a light in this kingdom, I mean, in this city, and a light to the world, and we want to see that light increase more and more and more. So if you've got an offering today, I encourage you to hold it in your hand. I get, do my giving online, uh, which you're welcome to do. You can go to our website, and there's a give button, and you can use PayPal or Venmo or other ways to give your money if you choose to. But it doesn't matter what the method is, what the vehicle is. It matters where your heart is. And so, Father, as we come today before you, as we stand here in our church, having heard your word, having worshipped you with your music, God, we just uh, give our gifts to you. God, we dedicate these gifts to the kingdom of God. 
We don't do this out of compulsion or because we're being forced to or told to, but it's out of our love and it's out of our commitment to you that we want to support your work in this world so that people can know Jesus like we know Jesus and so that we can continue to help and disciple the people in our church to know Jesus even better and to grow more and more in your word and in the journey that we're all on. So, Father, we pray your blessing over these gifts today. God, we pray that you would just cause them to be multiplied in this church and across the land. God, that so many people would just be touched by your word, by the gospel, Lord, by the logos, and that it would become life in them. So we thank you for these things today, and we thank you for always um, providing for us, Lord. We can trust you to provide for our needs. And we can trust you to give us wisdom in how to become stable in our finances and how to become even stable in our emotions and in all the spiritual activities that we take. So, Lord, we love you. First and foremost, we love you. So bless this time. Bless our gifts, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I want to say rise. And uh, I can't do it. It's just not me. <laughs> How about we all rise up and worship together? <laughs>
God's grace I stand. A mere man, flawed, broken and damned, surrendering all that I am and all that I could be for all that you are and all that I will be. Holy Spirit, fill me enough that it overflows my cup so that it reaches every single person that I touch and I know alone alone I'm not enough but with you here I know I'm gonna make it I know I'm not forsaken the Lord is in this place and my faith will not be shaken do you feel it the Lord is in this place and his love is for the taking and his love is for the taking so take it and not for a minute was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence here in this place. We thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us, that you conquered death forever so that we may live, so that we may have life. And not just life, but life abundant. God, help each one of us here today to hear the personal revelation that you have for us. Whatever it is that you're calling us into, God, I pray that we would hear that. And we would not only have ears to hear it, but that we would follow it, that we would take the action that we need to, to go wherever it is that you're calling us, that, that we would follow your voice and your voice alone, God, that we would know that whatever it is we're praying on, that you are already making paths straight before us, that you are already working all things together for our good. God, we thank you and we praise you. As we prepare to leave from this place, we pray for provision. We pay, pray for protection for each one of us, for our families. But most of all, God, we pray that you would help us each and every day to seek you more and more. To grow deeper and deeper in our knowledge of who you are and what you desire for each one of us in our lives. We thank you and we praise you. We lift all of this up to you for you and you alone are worthy. And we pray this in the name of God, our Father in heaven. In the name of God and the person of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for each and every one of us. In the name of God and the person of the Holy Spirit who lives with and in each one of us at all times, forever and ever. Amen and amen. As always, it is a privilege and an honor to worship with each and every one of you. I pray God's blessings over each and every moment of this week for you. Love you all, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. For a me